All right, the moment we've been waiting for, please put your hands together for the general manager of Kaspersky giving a keynote on cybersecurity for the crypto economy. <laughs> Okay, when we talk about blockchain, I don't, have to, I don't have to explain to every one of you. It's all about trust. The very reason why we take on blockchain is because we like the inherent trust in the technology itself. If you look at the technology, the four attributes of blockchain, consensus, providence, immutability, and finality. These are all the aspects we're looking for, and it is actually inbuilt into blockchain as, a, you know, as a, a concept, then why do we still see so many different hacks around the world? Just earlier this year, you have Binance being hacked. Star was hacked in 2016 that caused uh, the hard fork with Ethereum. So for investors in Ethereum, of course, you like having two currencies now at this point in time. But the point is, they are still susceptible to attacks. Now, if the technology is inherently safe, why then do you see all this? Just this year alone, 4.26 billion is gone, kaput, poof, 2019. And this, if we say that this is a crash, well, it is not. We look at the number of people here that is so excited about blockchain, so excited about cryptocurrencies. 523.8 million. This is the amount that APEC X Japan will spend on blockchain this year. The estimates in 2020, Singapore will spend alone 272 million in blockchain. By 2030, 2.6 billion. Now, this shows the exuberance in the technology. Now, what can we do? In 2018, it was all about ICO. You see fraud, you see scams. In 2019, everyone moved, that you can see it start to move towards STO, straight token offerings. And then now you see a lot of IEOs, exchange offerings. And we still see losses in this space. In 2019 alone, there are eight hacks. And that's more to date. And that's already more than 2018. So the hacks are happening as we speak. And in first half of 2019, we see 227 million being siphoned off. In, and the average size of the theft is 28 million. So what actually happened? Now, I'm going to give a few use cases here and the solutions to it. So, we know about the tower attack in 2016. It was a re-entrance attack. That means the function calls are allowed to execute while before the function call before it has finished the execution. And that's when the hackers can take the chance in between to create a hack. In Earlier this year, we saw 40,000 USD being siphoned off in an ICO. The solution is a simple health code, a healthy set of codes and consistent logic in everything. Thank you. Okay, it's just a mic adjustment. We move on now. Um, next, this is another Vulnerability we saw earlier this year, in February 2019, a crypto wallet. When you create a crypto wallet, they ask you for a passphrase. Guess what? There was an API call to check, spell check the passphrase. And someone hijacked that piece and siphoned 70,000 USD out. So you can see inherently blockchain is safe, but there are still a lot of peripheral things around it. And therefore, we need to see, we need to take an overall approach in protecting 
your crypto uh, chain application in protecting your entire crypto chain environment. The solution is a very simple one. You do a security assessment of your smart contract. You do, sorry, you do a security assessment of your crypto wallet application, and this will prevent all this, all this uh, hacking from happening. So we also have a success case with coins paid uh, earlier. Um, this is the first crypto payment and wallet solution that we have done. Uh, sorry, not that we have done. We have done a verification and an audit and an assessment of the environment. So in essence, when you look at what to do in a crypto, sorry, in a, in a blockchain environment, there are things you need to do around the cybersecurity. So you, will, you need to do the proactive activities to look at the, to do an audit to see what are the, the vulnerabilities in your smart contracts. Um, there needs to be proper cyber hygiene education to the staff. There should be a way to detect phishing attacks. And there are also reactive things that you need, you need to do if you get hacked, like instance response, like uh, uh, how to pre getting yourself prepared so that there won't be any future attacks. But most important of all, stay calm. Don't just pay up. Okay? So this is a very quick checklist of what you need to do if you are into a blockchain uh, application. First, you check your infrastructure. Whether is it resistant to attack? Second, you audit your source code. You audit all the codes that you're running in your environment. You audit the smart contract that you place on it. And you do things to prevent account takeover and fraud prevention. And you do this on a constant basis. OK? Now, how can we, how do we know all these things? Kaspersky as a company, we have been in the business of cybersecurity for the past 22 years. Um, one third of our staff are actually technical people. This is a very highly engineering company. On the average, we receive 360,000 malicious files every day. Imagine seeing that number of files every day. That has given us the capability to do the AI around it so that we can publish the right reputation files for the, vir for the virus scanning software that reaches your desktop. Okay. So this company has built over the last 22 years the deep experience and capability to identify all the deep threats. On top of that, we have 40 over top-notch research scientists, and they will only go after the, they will look at just APT alone. These are advanced persistent threats that are launched by organized crime groups, and together among them, they actually watch close to 110 different organized crime groups. And those include crime organizations, that include state actors as well. So a very quick uh, browse through of the researches, that, uh, some of the publications we have done, we have identified many different uh, threat groups and uh, activities over the last 22 years. And this is just a glimpse of some of them. Okay. Together, we have put together a very complete portfolio to, to help customer look into the cybersecurity uh, cyber piece of the environment. And that goes from basic baselining and assessment to risk mitigation, to monitoring and prioritization, and to investigation and remediation. OK, so I'm going to end with looking uh, uh, at the threat landscape for a typical crypto exchange. There are three areas that you need to look into. One is your own staff, your investors. These are people, they may be innocent people clicking on an innocent email and cause a phishing attack. So this needs to be prevented. There are external resources that you use, external consultants that you use, external, you outsource your application development to people. These are your external resources. They need to be well educated. You need to take your precautions as well. And last of all, the core infrastructure. As in all IT environment, the core infrastructure is where the attack will happen, and that is where you do to do the basic protection. Okay, recommendation simply against this tree, 
Number one, um, for your internal staff and for all your stakeholders, the traditional endpoint security is a must. And I always tell people the, the endpoint uh, protection does not mean PC and laptops. It includes your servers, it includes even the mobile phone you hold in your hands. In fact, these days we do so much on financial transactions on our mobile phone. You have all your crypto wallets on your mobile phone. It's quite amazing that nobody has, in fact, a very few, very low percentage of people have, an, uh, have endpoint protection software on their mobile phone. It's quite amazing. Um, second, you look at your external resources, your outsourcing, com your outsource companies. So you need to look at uh, 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 things like web and, and mobile app anti-fraud solutions. You need to look at phishing website detection solutions. Um, and last and, and most important is the fault, the, the data center that you need to fortify. And that's where you need to look at source. First, you start with the source code, do a source code review and application security framework review. Second, you do your pen test and do a targeted attack discovery because you may be attacked already. Third, you do it again, and anti-fraud, anti-money laundering solutions are needed. That is on top of the slew of cybersecurity solutions you need to build for typical data centers. All right? Security operations center, a group of good security analysts, these are basics. And it is even more important if you are holding important crypto assets in your hands. Okay? All right, with that, thank you. Uh, and I'll do that. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Yo. Please give him a big round of applause. Thank you so much. Now I know what deep threat intelligence I was sitting there listening. Being thank a good you. student. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Thank you, thank you Mr. Yo.